A very good evening to all of you. The talk is back and I'm back today with two new guests. Last time we had here the Bharatiya Janta Party and the Congress and today as you might have already read in the description of this Facebook Live today, we have the Aam Aadmi Party and the BJ. This promises to be a very interesting debate today, a very interesting interaction today. Since we will be talking about Karnataka, the upcoming elections in Karnataka and also nationally what these two parties have been doing, we will try and understand that from these two particular leaders over here. On my left, I have Mr. Prithvi Reddy from the Aam Aadmi Party, the Karnataka convener of the Aam Aadmi Party and on my right hand side, I have Mr. Narayan Swami who happens to be a member of the Legislative Assembly in Karnataka. Uh, hails from Bharatiya Janata Party. Welcome both of you and thank you very much thank for you. joining us today. Thank you. So, you know, a lot of people, when we announced that we'll have Aam Aadmi Party and BJP together with us, a lot of people wrote in to us and they really expected it to be a spectacle, is what one person said. Right. So, now I'll begin with the Bharatiya Janata Party today uh, about what is happening in the state currently. What is the plan of Bharatiya Janata Party? for the upcoming elections in Karnataka. Yeah, um, Mr. Janesh, uh, we are going very strong in Karnataka state uh, uh, preparing for the uh, I mean, forthcoming elections in 2018. And uh, we are organizationally very strong, cadres are very strong, and uh, this has uh, grown up from zero level, come across so many hurdles. Now it has become very, very strong. We had a party, we had a ruling in 2008 to 2013. So many good things we have done in those periods. So, people of this state looking forward once again to form the BJP government in Karnataka state under the leadership of our dynamic leader, Modi Right. So, now coming to the Aam Aadmi Party, you guys are in power in Delhi, but after that, there has been no real win for you guys. What do you plan to do in Karnataka and how do you think that there is a chance for any success for you guys? I think the harsh reality is um, Karnataka needs an alternate political party. Thus far, alternate political parties has meant uh, one time Congress, one time BJP and once in a while the JDS decides to either go with the Congress or the BJP. I think the need of the hour is a true alternate. Uh, we are a very young party, four year old. Um, we've had our focus uh, largely on Delhi. We, in the recent uh, past, we have contested elections in Delhi and I mean in Punjab and Goa, mainly because strategically these were smaller states and we wanted to grow uh, organically uh, in Karnataka. We have started our grassroots organization work. We have already announced our participation in the urban local body elections, which are also due around the same time as assembly elections. Uh, we are actually working at the ward level and we are working under the radar. A um, lot of good work happening in the districts and we are quite confident that uh, before the assembly elections, we will uh, create a sufficiently uh, interesting campaign where people around the state will be given a true alternative. Mr. Ali, what makes you think that people of Karnataka can put their faith in the Aam Aadmi Party in Karnataka, having seen what is happening in Delhi? The expectations were massive from the Aam Aadmi Party whenever you guys came, and uh, the Delhi people did trust, but what exactly went wrong? They say imitation is the best form of flattery. The fact that uh, yesterday the CM of Karnataka has announced exactly the same measures that we've implemented in Delhi means we are doing something right. Um, there has been uh, a sustained attack on the Amadi party. We are a small party. Um, I think our oppos opponents have managed creating a doubt in the minds of people. The novelty of the idea of clean politics seems to be the sheen is going off. But 
I think our work is going to talk for itself. For example, the free water, which was announced yesterday, the free treatments in uh, private hospitals, uh, the Mohalla clinic. Uh, if we were not doing something right, I don't see any reason why our opponents are copying. It's not just in Karnataka. Uh, even in Gujarat, uh, the Mohalla clinic has been made a part of their budget. There has to be something that we are doing right. Would you like to comment on that? So, <clears throat> we had a government in Karnataka to the end of the team. When we took over the government, our budget was 36,000 crores. When we gave the government back to some other party, it was 1,46,000 crores. What our ready is committing on giving those called the schemes, popular schemes, I would say. We have given so much of schemes in Karnataka state. So much of schemes. Not only Mohalla clinics, we have given the Bagarish, Bagarish means schemes to all what's called newly born and like girl child. That's what uh, our Modi is telling Beti Pada or Beti Machao. And what he has announced now, he is going to give 6,000 rupees to each and every what's called pregnant woman from 4 6 months. And uh, school children, empowering children, empowering school education, empowering woman and the child. Empowering youth, we have given so much, so many schemes. That's what now Amadmi Party is a, a new party, which has offshoot of a hungry a men of an India against corruption, recent past. So what I what I want to tell is, BJP is a, a party of cadres. BJP has seen ups and downs in his life lifetime. So many people have sacrificed their lives to build this party. Their vision and intention is to build a dynamic India, a what is called the India with equality, a India with what is called self respect. And also, they wanted to build corrupt free India. Whatever the party is. 1 point program in uh, Anna Hazar is movement against corruption. Modi government from past three years, kindly look, look at it towards the way it's going. Not even a small scandal, no corruption. And uh, we, we cannot see such a, we, are, we cannot see such a government from recent I mean, past 70 years of the independence. That's why the uh, Imitation of AAP schemes to BJP is unwarranted, not required. Right? Yes. So one thing, one thing, one thing that came up in this discussion, Amadmi Party said free water, our BJP MLA here said about some other socks. Uh, every political party somehow in India thinks that they can just roll out these socks to people like you and I, the voters out there, and then get their votes somehow. This something is this is something which must change and which needs to change and this is something which you and I will eventually have to change when we go out to press that button on the electronic voting machine. Now, what is the alternative that we have? We'll be talking about that also eventually. But first, I then Mr. Reddy respond to what uh, Mr. Narayan Swami said here. Uh, Danish, before I respond to Mr. Narayan Swami, I'd like to respond to what you just said right? about popular schemes and about giving free Firstly, I think. You must understand that what we've done is to put honest and efficient use to taxpayers' money. Uh, I think it's a bounden duty for in a poor country like ours for a government to ensure that basic necessities for the dignified life are provided. We strongly believe that before you go around the world with a begging bowl and say that come make in India, you need to make in India. Our schemes in education have been uh, yielding results where for the first time in history, 377 students who have studied in government schools have today got through the IIT. Um, we are talking about providing healthcare, which is the uh, bounden duty. You can't allow people to die because they don't have money. Um, as far as water goes, you must understand it's not free water, it's smart water. What we've effectively done. You are calling it free water. 
I, I was talking about the free water that has been implemented by the government yesterday. They are calling it smart water. And the reason for calling it smart water is when we gave 20,000 liters of water, lifeline water free for every family in Delhi, people actually laughed and said it was bad economics. What has actually happened is on two fronts, we've actually proven why it is smart water. Number one, the consumption of water has come down because people are trying to keep their consumption below 20,000. Number two, the revenue of the Delhi Jal Board has actually gone up by 176 crores. So it is not about giving free. We should never talk about the government giving something free because effectively it's your money and you're getting back your money. I think we have paid in advance for these services and what the government is giving you is honest governance. And there's a huge difference in giving a free laptop and ensuring that the tax money, that hard-earned tax money of people is efficiently and honestly used. Uh, to respond to Ms. Narayan Swami, um, I think what happened three years ago was there was a huge marketing campaign that was run by the BJP. Uh, hope is something that people love people hold on to and I think the uh, wonderful campaign that they ran for the 2014 election where they actually convinced people on their anti-corruption agenda. Uh, Ms. Narayan Swami was talking about the Anna Hazare uh, Andolan which I was a part of. Three years have gone by, we still don't have a Lokpal bill. We have passed a Lokaita bill in Delhi which is lying with the centre. As far as no corruption cases, I can't understand how we've forgotten the Vyapam scan in Madhya Pradesh, uh, the uh, Vasundaraji government in Rajasthan, let alone these states. Let's talk about Karnataka. Recently, I filed a CBI complaint against uh, our MP, BJP MP from uh, Bijapur, who has looted 50,000. 50 crores in a uh, highway scam. Uh, he's a union minister. Um, we've launched a, comp a complaint. It's an open and shut case. The CBI seems to be finding fault only with the opponents of the BJP. They don't seem to have time to investigate these matters. Most importantly, I don't see how Mr. Narendra Modi can come to Karnataka with an anti corruption agenda when you have. The chief, the president of the BJP, and the CM face is the brand ambassador of corruption. He's the only CM who has gone to jail. Now they will tell you that the case against him was dismissed. That's entirely wrong. The only reason that case fell in court was because it was wrongly, the procedure followed was incorrect, and it was said that they didn't have a jurisdiction. He did not say, Mr. Yadurappa was not guilty because the fact that he received a large sum of money, his son's trust received a large sum of money from the mining mafia is proof itself. I don't think it requires any investigation. Furthermore, I think the BJP will have a lot to answer in Karnataka because they have 17 MPs, three union ministers. What have they done for Karnataka? We've had water problems, we've had the Kaveri issue with Tamil Nadu, we've had the Madai issue with Goa. The BJP has governments both in Maharashtra as well as in Goa. And the Prime Minister completely washed his hands of the water crisis in uh, Karnataka. So I think it will be very hard for them except for um, the sheen of the Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, after demonetization, GSP, right, so, etc. I don't think that story will sell, and I don't think they are uh, left with anything but for divisive. Very interesting allegations over here. How would you respond to that? Uh, regarding allegations against uh, uh, what Mr. Uh, Lee is telling you, BJP. After independence, this country was ruled by Congress for 50 years. And for 13 years, is ruled by other Jinta Parivar. Seeing those what's called regimes of administration governance, 
If you think of corruption level now, it is not even 0 0.0 percent, 0 0.01 percent in central government. You have seen UPA 1, UPA 2. Again, it is them only Anna Hazare staged Andolan against corruption. They have looted India through 2G scam, this scam, school scam, all this scam. That's why Modi wanted to build an India corruption free, terrorism free, black money free. He wanted to have India with a different dimension, a different vision. After Modi coming to power of three, I mean three years, I don't think Prithvi Reddy has got any base to allege against Modi of having any corruption charges against any minister. Giving a letter to some department to shift the tone. It, if it is a being a, if, he, if he charges, if he, if he is charging that, giving that itself is a corruption practice, then how can a public representative work? I am also familiar here. If somebody comes to me for some favor, we will give a letter by not telling you do it. We will consider the request on merit. That's what he has done. Secondly, when he was talking about the corruption in Karnataka state, yes, he told the question, I will answer both. He also admitted that the all the allegations has been dropped by court against BS Now he is a corruption free, I mean charges free. Currently looking to what is called other scenarios in Karnataka state, Congress government. Now, Congress government is doing the ruling from past four and a half years. What is the AAP's fighting against corruption in Karnataka state? Why are they keeping quiet? What is the end result they are getting out of it? I will ask Mr. Reddy, what is going on in Delhi? Why did your ministers, they were one by one imprisoning or entangled themselves in different scams in Delhi? Talking and playing with emotions is different. Giving good governance is very, very different. I don't think people have a lot of what's called expectation about uh, what's called our KJWG and AABD. We also were eagerly waiting for uh, what is called AAP is the government's good work in India. But uh, lack of experience, lack of what is called maturity in governance, they have totally failed in India. That shows the recent municipality elections in India. Giving water, giving laptop, all these okay. But where is your governance in Delhi? And you are, you are telling something about BJP here which has given a good governance, except corruption charges here and there, you see the governance and development activity and schemes given by BJP is one of the best regime ever seen after post independence Right, so how do you respond to that now, the corruption allegations against the Amadi party in Delhi, the scandals of the Amadi party which came up, 21 of your MLAs were on the verge of being disqualified, so how do you respond to that? Um, I'll answer one by one. Firstly, uh, IAC was India against corruption, it wasn't India against Congress, so I would like to place that on record. Uh, number two, as far as uh, corruption allegations and the good governance that Mr. Narayan Swami claimed BJP gave us uh, in 2008-2013, it was the most scandalous government we had. The very inception of their government was through Operation Kamla. Let's not forget that they set a trend of resort politics in Karnataka. In Karnataka, we must understand that yes, there has been corruption, there's no denying it. And I hold, uh, I, I would not like to even discuss the Congress because I think it's a lost cause. I think uh, nationally, they are certainly on their way out. They have used Karnataka as a honeypot in the past four years. They are funding the party nationally. And I suppose I can 
take the liberty of saying internationally through uh, the Congress government here. Um, Mr. Uh, Sidramaya, CM, will also say, but uh, I didn't get arrested or my ministers didn't get arrested. That is because they closed down the local Is it BJP? One, didn't thing, one thing that both of the parties here are so The Congress did not win because they were the Congress. The Congress won because the BJP did not deliver on their corruption free promise. The Congress had the Lokayukta to thank to come here into government in Karnataka. But the moment they came, they shut down the institution. Um, the entire cabinet is filled with businessmen with interests in the real estate in, in and around Bangalore. So the fact that they haven't got caught is because there's no one to catch them. They've ensured that will happen. What are you doing? So if you realize, um, there was, when they were trying to close the institution of Lokaita, in a period of one month, I was arrested 14 times. Uh, our party had people who went on a hunger strike to uh, protest against the ACB. It, it's not important uh, of, as to what we did because we are a young party. We are at every district, at every, I mean, this Bijapur, this uh, highway scam was exposed by the Amadmi party. At every stage, we have used all the powers at our disposal to ensure that we protest against corruption. Um, I don't think it is a justification to say the Congress is more corrupt. What we are looking for is corruption free government, not saying that we are better than the Congress. As far as the your question regarding our Delhi MLAs and the so-called controversies around the office of profit, the office of profit I'm happy you use the word office of profit because profit implies that there is a monetary gain. When someone is not getting paid a single rupee, there is no question of office of profit. As far as the arrest of the MLAs in Delhi, while uh, the world is told about the first part where they are arrested, what they are not told is about how the Delhi courts have slammed the Delhi police and ask them if they didn't have anything better to do. None of the cases have stood their test in courts. Um, it's, I think, soon after the Would you also refute the video washout. The videos which came out of one of your ministers in Delhi. He was sacked right. as soon as we saw the video. But the question is, let's be very clear. If Prithvi Reddy has skeletons in his closet, which the party doesn't know about, and if the party comes to know that we are involved in anything regarding corruption or criminality, we sack them immediately. Not just that. Remember, there was an MLA who asked for a bribe of 6,000 rupees. The volunteer who was with him recorded it and showed it to our CM, and he was actually sacked in a, through a press conference. You may say, why dramatize it? The idea of doing it through a press conference is to send a very strong message to anyone who might even consider or think they'll get away with corruption. But I remember one video of uh, Sarvin Kejiva earlier before the election where he said that I guarantee that all the contestants which we have picked, all the people we have picked in our party, we have, we have vetted them very thoroughly. They have no criminal record, they have got no such thing. How do you respond? So, um, let me say that we do have a system of due diligence. I don't know if you are aware that we had um, our former colleagues complain on the ticket distribution of 12 candidates. Uh, we had no one less than Admiral Ramdas who did a study of these candidates. We had to let go of one of them if they found something. Danish, the idea is not nobody can vouch for another person integrity, right? So we will do take all the necessary precautions. But the question is, when something happens, are you willing to act against your own people? Now, for example, you have a union minister here who is involved in a highway scam, which 
I will show the documents to Mr. Narayan Swami. It's an open and shut case. Why have they not asked him to resign? So I, I, it's not a question. You don't need to prove it in a court of law. If there is prima facie evidence, and if you believe that there's substantial evidence, you need to let go of whoever it is. And I think that is, uh, in reality, the only way because who's to say uh, what skeleton is there in whose uh, closet? You do some amount of due diligence. And the rest of it, you should have the courage to let go of your own people or take action against your own people if they're found to be wrong. How many, uh, I mean, uh, what are the action you have taken against your uh, six, seven, five to seven ministers in Delhi who has uh, allegations of corruption, misconduct? Have sat all of them? There were two ministers who, against who, one, there was a video CD that came into uh, public domain. In the other case, he was sacked because of our own action, not because someone pointed a finger. All the rest of the cases, there are absolutely no evidence against this. Unfortunately, because um, the CBI, which has always been known to be a cage parrot, uh, has been set after us. Um, I remember they went after uh, one of the IS officers and uh, after doing, I mean, they say CBI raid, so that's the scandal. Why have they not spoken about the fact? So what did they find? Why doesn't CBI make it public as to what they found? It's not enough to say CBI raided XYZ. So you raided Rajendra Kumar. What you found was four bottles of foreign made liquor in excess of a limit which I was also not aware of that you are allowed to have only eight bottles and he had 12. So I'm trying to say, so this is the substantial evidence that they have. And it's, it's a known fact that they have used both the LG's office as well as the Delhi police to harass us. But in spite of that, even if uh, the, uh, some of the electronic media in our country don't acknowledge it, international media today, no one less than the ex-secretary general of the UN, you can call him anti-national if you want, Mr. Narayan Swami, but no one less than such eminent people have given us an appreciation for the kind of work that is going on in uh, the, Delhi, <coughs> the Delhi government's two years of government. Right, so we'll, come, we'll, we'll come to that. We'd just like to remind our viewers that uh, you're watching us live today. We are currently from our Bangalore studio speaking to the representative of the Aadmi Party and the BJP both talking about what they have been doing, some allegations and counter allegations currently going on. Ultimately, you are the best judge who is still watching what exactly is going on over here. Now, coming to the BJP over here, I would like to ask you, Mr. Narayan Swami, how strong do you think that BJP is in Karnataka? What are your chances in the upcoming elections? Uh, Mr. Danish, uh, as I, in the first point, this one I, draw, I clarified and told you, that BJP is going very strongly. Despite the, all the factions within the party that there is, there is no faction at all. Right. Besides, uh, no, 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 everything is closed now. Yeah. And uh, our high command, Amit Shahji and Modi ji, they have taken a talk of situation. They are monitoring everything. And this time, uh, we will 100% in 2018 elections, BJP will come to power. Because we have already started a historic job. Lacks of karikartas are going to each and every house. In Karnataka, say the past 15 days. Ours is a catering based party. Ours is a party with a difference, party with ideology, party with a commitment. The people of Karnataka have got trust in us. In last election 2013, we lost the election not because of our uh, what's called the development in this thing, because of some internal factions among the party itself, we lost the vote. Otherwise, there was, as Mr. Reddy already he is rightly pointed out that Chitramaya did not win as a Congress government because of some mistakes, some what's called factionism inside the BJP. They are both advantage. That's very interesting that you have agreed to that. Now, what about the, all the news of lynching and all the news of these Gaurakshaks coming in uh, and not about the BJP? Uh, so Modi, ji, Modi ji has strongly sent a message three days back. 
and he is telling again and again this in the guise of what is called Gorakshak the lynching of any person any human being is inhuman it cannot be tolerated and he has sent a strong message to all the states to what is called to punish the people who are involved in this type of activity we are against that what is called lynching of this this is a it is a passion we, even Karnataka also and Delhi also BJP are that firm this thing we will not accept this type of action I, I think it is uh, such a mockery of the issue when actually um, the only way they, I believe that they can win elections here on because they have uh, been exposed on their promises of development uh, and the economy. I think the only way they will win elections is by dividing society. See what is happening in Mangalore. It is very sad that a person who is going to be a CM candidate from the BJP actually says that if you arrest a particular person who is leading the RSS in Mangalore, that Karnataka will burn. I mean, how can you burn or threaten that Karnataka will burn on an issue like this? Um, I strongly believe that the BJP needs to first make up its mind on what's their stance on this whole issue because uh, Mr. Parikar actually made an uh, announcement two, three days back telling the people of Goa that don't worry, there will be no shortage of beef, you will get beef from uh, Karnataka. So I think on one hand, uh, they actually attack people who are uh, involved in any way in even transporting of cattle. Uh, on the other hand, they have CMs, even uh, Riju Union Minister Riju, who is uh, from the North East, has said the same thing that you know, they will continue. So you can't have this dual policy. So let them make up their minds. So on that note, how would you like to respond to that? That everywhere else, beef is say, I mean, it becomes sick, cow <coughs> is sacred, but in Karnataka and in North East, it's. Gorakshan bill has passed in Delhi parliament. But it left the states has to accept that bill. And as far as Karnataka state, the government has not came out with a clear stand. What is going to do? What is BJP stand on that? Are you going to allow cows for the no, no, no. We stand by the central government decision to ban cows cutter and also go ahead. We will stand by that. It's our this agenda. It's our we will worship the cow. Cow. How can we allow the cow to be killed in a what's called in the over states? And uh, or somebody is doing some business like just like a what's called a uh, pink revolution or something like that. People are talking about. We don't allow that to happen in the Indian year. We don't want that. But we just have your chief minister from Goa on record saying that beef can be exported to Goa from Karnataka. That way it is personal view, you don't know, but we are the standard BJP stand. Right. But uh, so if uh, you come to power in Karnataka, hundred percent will ban the food. You ban the food. Right. That's an interesting thing. Now, uh, coming to you, Pitfi, talking about the Amarki party in Karnataka. Again, I will ask a similar question to you. How strong do you think you guys are currently in Karnataka? We are the underdogs. Um, we are a new party. Right? Uh, we are trying to get together good people across Karnataka. I believe that uh, Karnataka has had a lot of good politicians over the years. Uh, many of them are actually fed up with the state of politics. The fact that uh, there was always corruption, but the BJP to come to power took corruption in Karnataka to a completely different level altogether. Um, the tickets were given purely to the real estate mafia, people with tons of money, and suddenly, if someone was spending 50 lakhs for an election, it went you up just to said five crores. about the Congress as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The Congress was always bad, so we are not. We are not. Uh, BJP was not bad. Uh, no, I'm trying to say the BJP, which claims to be a party with a difference, is not. So the space is there. Um, it's not our politics is based. We don't ha have the kind of resources that our opponents have, whether it be the uh, money, financial resources, or the manpower resources. But I think the only way is up. I think the people of Karnataka need to decide whether they want an alternative. We are trying to get together 
all the good people across Karnataka and we try to provide it. On that note, yeah. on that note, we were, I was just asking uh, Mr. Ranata and Swami over here about the factions within the party. You had an exit of Ramakrishna Reddy from your party. How do you respond to that? What exactly yeah, happened? Yeah. What, what Ravi Krishna Reddy. It was Ravi Krishna Reddy. Um, I mean, in every party, you have people who will come and go. Um, as a policy, uh, me personally, as well as in the party, we will not talk about people from a colleague because uh, we could have a difference of opinion. Uh, some people are able to manage differences of opinion. Uh, let's understand that uh, I'm happily married for 20 years, but I still have a difference of opinion on whether I should have coconut chutney or groundnut chutney with my dosa for breakfast. Now, if that is taken to the public domain, that is not acceptable. And uh, Ravi Krishna Reddy chose to leave the party. Uh, and we think, think he, is, he was made to be very, very like, uh, you know, uh, powered, co powered by the party. Um, I don't think any person can have that complaint against the uh, Ahmadmi party because we are a party which is like soft clay, which is being molded. The question is, are you going to be? Uh, put your uh, nose to the uh, pottery wheel and try to shape the future, or else, if you have a difference of opinion, I will agree. Right. So, looking at uh, the social media, we've seen massive support for the Bharti Janta Party on social media, be it Twitter, be it Facebook, wherever it is. You post one thing about Aam Aadmi Party, you'll have a hundred people, maybe sometimes even a thousand people trolling you if you post anything pro Aam Aadmi Party, anything against BJP, you will be trolled on social media at that time. So now tell me, do you think these people, all of them are bhaks out there? Do you really think there is sentiment against the Aam Aadmi Party also good growing within the country? Um, a lot of it is mechanized, a lot of it is paid for. No one less than someone involved in their IT cells are we post actually exposed it and has written a book about how they have gone around. Uh, doing their trolling. Um, it's a matter of time, you know, uh, everything has a flavor for a period of time. Uh, the social media space, uh, I must concede that the uh, BJP has managed occupying mind space of people. Um, the question is, are they being uh, civil on uh, social media? I don't think so. And I think but are, are the Aadmi, fact are, are the volunteers of Aam Aadmi Party being civil on social media? Well, if somebody in the Aam Aadmi Party does the same thing, it's not acceptable. That's all I mean. How do you respond to that? The presence of BJP in Aam Aadmi Party? Well, chunks of uh, Kejriwal has got uh, earlier chance than Modi. People were really crazy about Kejriwal when he stood against corruption. After giving power to him in Delhi, the way he is going, the attitude and governance and immaturity, I am sorry to say this word, people are fed up. That's why AAP is losing base the chance of AAP in last election 2013, you will not have the same support in 2018. You are going down in the minds of people. People have given space in their mind to occupy AAP, but you are not doing it. You lost it. You lost the time. You know, because AAP is always negative oriented. What is reaction? Rapid reaction. And they wanted to play with the emotions of the people very quickly. That's how, because one is without a what's called pop, proper organization setup, cadre. People of India, people of Delhi wanted to have some change. They are given chance to him early in the morning. He did not do it. Now, people have given chance to Modi ji. Who is in the positive direction, dynamic, decisive, diplomat, everything. People accepted Modi as a mass leader, not only in India, entire world. 
That's why the following of Modi ji and BJP is very, very big. Very big. It is not like a stage manage. It is not like a pay for it. No, I don't accept this type of uh, what's called uh, uh, it's called uh, thinking or versions of Gujarati in this direction. Modi is all together a BJP and Modi a good chemistry which is winning entire India and even the world also. Now, Karnataka wants a separate flag. This has been a controversy which has been brewing for far too long now. So, how, what is the stand of Bharatiya Janata Party? Today, what you, uh, today you will see the statement of uh, Sidramaya. He is going back. Sidramaya, Mr. Reddy was referring BJP while talking about Mangalore issue. That they will give probable statements and they will. But if you look at large, the existing government's activities towards dividing society, they have gone for uh, Jati Gandhi, that means caste based census. They wanted to see that everything. The politics, entire politics has to go on only on caste basis rather than anything else. That's what the Congress is wanting. This flag issue, it is unwarranted, not required. We have got national flag, national anthem. We have got Karnataka Nadi Day. But why do you need Kannada Doja? We have got already, we have got one Kannada flag that is the tough run in the what's called yellow and the red. And I don't know what made Mr. Siddharamaya to go for this type of a petty politics in the minds of people to divide the society at large. We don't accept this. How does the Amati Bidji Party feel about the Karnataka separate plan? I think whether it was the, uh, you know, Canada in the uh, metro, which has been recently in the news, or whether it's the flag issue, these are symptoms. It's a symptom of A government which does not respect the fact that we are a very diverse country. Uh, we have, uh, we must understand that if you don't understand that our country is diverse in this true sense of religion, caste, language, food habits, the way we dress. You can't impose things on people. Um, I think the reaction in Karnataka. So then you are referring to the Hindi imposition. Yes. I, I'm correct, but I'm asking about first the flag, Karnataka flag. Where did, where does the Aam Army Party, especially the Karnataka wing, stand on that? I don't think it's a question of Karnataka wing or the Aam Army Party. Aam Army Party respects diverse. Amadmi party believes that the strength of our country is unity in diversity. I don't see why local sentiments cannot be respected. Let's understand internationally, if you were to go to a country in Europe, for example, you have a city flag, you have a state flag, you have the national flag, and then you have the European Union flag. There is absolutely no doubt about the fact that the national flag takes primacy of place and there is no debate on that. But why cannot local sentiments be respected if the people of Karnataka choose to have an identity of their own? Why can I not be a Kannadiga and an Indian? Do I need to speak Hindi to be? Patriotic? Do I need to uh, learn to read and write Hindi? I don't think it's necessary. I may do it out of choice because it will help me communicate with people across the country. But anything that is shoved down a person's throat will be take in Karnataka. We actually have four languages: we have Tulu, Konkani, we have Kodava, and we have Kannada. People across the state have welcomed Kannada. People respect Kannada because it was not forced on them. We make dosa in 20 different ways. Imagine having a state dosa that you can make it only this way. The chutney has to be this way. And 
the sambar has to be this way otherwise you are not a kannadiga you don't respect the karnataka it's not necessary respect diversity our strength we have shown over centuries india has shown the world how you can live in peace with diversity in religion in language we've never had such problem the kannadigas are the most peace loving people but that does not mean you impose why would someone like venkaya naidu say that you need hindi for the progress of the country the southern states have contributed much more to the gdp of this country than all the northern states put together so the moment you try to overpower or show that i am the bigger brother or overbearing then you have people who will push back i think that there is absolutely no reason why we cannot respect local sentiments how did anyone i mean let's understand that the first chief of army staff the field marshal karyappa recently hanuman lance hanumanta nayak gave his life for this country you have people in every walk of life whether it's sports all of us are indians first but does that mean that i cannot respect a local sentiment i don't see there is no debate i don't think this this is not a matter that requires any discussion i think it requires you to respect everyone and their sentiments as long as someone is not being sessionist i know that some people have said you are creating another kashmir rubbish sessionist people in kashmir who want a separate state who want to separate from the state of india that is wrong the kannadigas believe we are very much a part of sir mentioned the issue of the nandu gita it says in kannada it says o oh mother daughter of mother india so our our state anthem our state song recognizes the supremacy of our country we will always respect and give the pride of place to our national flag but why would you object to someone having a flag ಸೆಂಟಿಮೆಂಟ್ they are playing with the sentiments of the people That's it's all. an election gimmick but as far as the choice of the people i think it needs to be respected i believe when you respect people's choices that will unify right now coming back to you before we wrap up, wrap up this session today uh what do you think that bjp has to offer to the people of karnataka if you guys come to power what is it going to be bjp how is it going to be bjp come over here I told you the BJP is a party with a difference. Our honorable prime minister is going with a good speed, good spirit, dynamism, and also he is telling each and every cadre of BJP to be straight, to be honest, to be workaholic, to be positive minded, and let's build a great nation. by keeping all those things in mind in ensuing elections 100% you will get a clean government proactive pro people government and also we will be committed to the state of karnataka to protect the entire society the fabric of socio social societal what is the formation of karnataka and also we will see to it that Karnataka growth in wise what's called in the gdp gst wise uh, we will bring back karnataka to number one position in karnataka in the india indian level right on that note i'll come back to you mr pitsvedi from the aam aadmi party what do you have to offer to the people of karnataka sorry i i i am just want to say one thing the only number one status that the bjp got in karnataka when they were in power was the most corrupt state in india um having said that i think there are some major issues to be addressed in karnataka 
the largest being a gradient crisis. I think uh, if you look at the farm of suicides, it's gone beyond any acceptable limits. Remember last year, on one side, you had farmers in Mandya who had water. They grew sugar cane and they didn't buy the sugar cane, saying that there was an excess of sugar. Uh, so the mills did not run. On the other hand, you have um, the uh, farmers in, in Kolar, in Chikulapur, in northern Karnataka, who are suffering for the want of water. And I think that we must respect the fact that 60% of our state is rural, is dependent, largely dependent on agriculture. Another major issue which we would like to address is solving the problem of urbanization or overcrowding of Bangalore. Our neighboring states, including Tamil Nadu, have about 10 growth engines, whether it's Coimbatore, uh, Chennai. Uh, if, if they have growth which is spread out around the state, Karnataka, ever since the formation of the state, has become Bangalore central. It's almost like the governments in Karnataka have forgotten that the Mysore state became Karnataka state. So where is the development if you go to uh, the Hyderabad Karnataka region, you will not see development. You will see for miles you can drive without seeing any kind of job creation there. Um, on one side, Bangalore is collapsing because of overcrowding. Uh, you are going on saying that I will build a steel flyover, I will widen roads. Those are not real solutions. If IBM and all these IT companies could come from across the world to Bangalore City, why would they not go to Darwad, Mangalore, Tavangere, Tumkur, Mysore, which are all educational hubs where we are producing quality engineers? By the thousands. If they've come across the world, I'm sure they wouldn't mind going to these cities. So I think um, equal developments, uh, a well spread out development of the state will be a huge um, agenda for the Amadmi Party in Karnataka. Uh, Bangalore is dying. Uh, reality is that. A water crisis is staring on us. Uh, the recent BBMP elections has only brought more and more issues to uh, Bangalore City. Uh, it's not a question. Public transportation uh, is, is not being given the importance it needs to. Uh, the fact that Recently, the Karnataka government has actually announced the denotification of 1,500 lakes. Let's understand, 400 years ago, Kempe Gaudaji actually realized that Bangalore is the only city internationally which is grown to a limit, but not by the sea or has a river going through. He built a network of lakes, he built large calways in those times which right. connected and looked after the needs of water in Bangalore. All this has collapsed. It's on account of vested interests and I believe if you have an honest government, it will really solve this problem. Right. So on that note, we will have to wrap up today's uh, live show. The talk, we had with us the representatives of the Aam Army Party and the Bhartiya Janta Party. You heard both of them speak today, you heard both their agenda. You've seen both of them in power, the Aam Army Party in Delhi, and you've seen BJP in the center. Now, what's going to happen in the next election, the upcoming election in Karnataka, is going to be in your hands, the voters of this particular state. For all the national viewers, otherwise, from outside Karnataka, you must have heard both the parties. There were some allegations, some counter allegations, some scandals which we discussed today. A lot remained undiscussed. Perhaps in the times to come, we will come back to you and discuss on those issues as well. Thank you very much to both of you for joining us today over here. And thanks to you for joining us today for this Facebook Live. We'll come back to you with the next live very soon. Till then, take good care of yourselves.